In this video, we're going to make a fun, simple slot machine game using Python. So I've got these symbols here, which are part of what's called UTF-8, a character encoding. And we're going to use these in our game to make it a bit more fun. Now I found those symbols inside of tables like this online, and I just collected them here to make it easier. Now the first thing we'll do is create a list of the actual symbols for the slot machine itself. So I'll have symbols is equal to, and I'm going to use these symbols here for the slot machine. These other ones I'm gonna use for things like welcome and congratulations messages. So I'll paste these in here and I'll make these all strings. And these are gonna be the six possible symbols that can show up when the slot machine is spun. And seven isn't really a special character, but I've included it here anyways, because seven is very common to see in slot machines. Now we're gonna randomly select three items. To do this, we're gonna import the random module. So here I'll import random. And the random module has a function called choices. So here I'm gonna call random.choices. And what I'll pass it is the symbols list, and then k is equal to three. Now what this will do is randomly select three items from this list, symbols. Now we can actually have repeats when using the choices function. So we could have maybe two lemons and one diamond or three cherries or three sevens. So we're gonna have repeats potentially. And we'll store this into a new list called spin. Now this k is equal to three here is what's called a named parameter where k is the name of the parameter and three is the argument we're passing in. And some Python functions use this style of parameter. Now we can output the actual spin results. So first we'll output spinning. We'll have a new line character here with backslash n to put this text on a new line. Then we'll have spinning dot dot dot. Then we'll put the actual symbols that were spun. So we'll call print and we'll use an f string here. So we'll have f and then the string. We'll have backslash n for new line. We'll use this separator character here to separate the actual symbols that were spun. Then we'll output the first symbol that was spun with curly braces and we'll have spin at the index zero. So the first item in that list. Then we'll have spin at the index one, so the next item in that list, and then spin at the index two, so the last item in that list. And we'll put those there. So this here is an F string. What it's gonna do is produce a new string from this. And using these curly braces with these list items, we're gonna put into that string these symbols. So we call that interpolation and those symbols are gonna be put into that new string that this F string is producing. We can actually test our program right now. So let's save it and let's run it here. And we get, wow, we got a jackpot right away. And you can see we're now getting these slot machine spins using those symbols. So the next thing we should do is tell the user the result. Was it a jackpot where they got all three symbols matching or did they only get two symbols or did they get no matches? We should also output some kind of welcome message too. So let's do that. So back here, let's output a welcome message. We'll have here print and we'll say welcome to the slot machine. And then I'm gonna use this symbol here to make it nicer. So let me cut that there. And then I'll paste it here and I'll paste it here as well. Then we'll check to see how the player did. Did they get three matching symbols, which is a jackpot or only two or none? And we use an if else if else control structure to do this. So down here we'll have if the first symbol in the list matches the second symbol in the list and matches the third symbol in the list, we have a jackpot because all three symbols match. And we'll put here jackpot. So I'll use this here as a fun sort of jackpot symbol and I'll say jackpot exclamation mark and all three match. I'll also have a new line here to put this on a new line. Then we'll check to see if only two symbols match. So we'll have here else if the first symbol in the list matches the second symbol in the list or the first symbol in the list matches the third symbol in the list or the second symbol in the list matches the third symbol in the list. If any of these are true, we have two matching symbols and we'll put that. 
So here we'll call print, we'll have a new line. I'll use this as the symbol for two matching symbols. And we'll put that there. Oops. Let me put that back. Let me grab it again. And we'll put that there. And I'll have two symbols match. Not bad, exclamation mark. Otherwise, we have no matching symbols and I'll put a sad face. So we'll grab that there. And then down here, we'll output the sad face. So we'll have print and we'll have a new line with sad face and we'll say no match, try again, exclamation mark. So let's try this out. We'll save it and we'll run it. And we get no match, try again. We get two symbols match, not bad. And a jackpot is unlikely, but it appears to be working. So let's keep going now. Let's make it so that the player can play the game again. We'll have to use a while loop for this to make it so the game repeats again and again until the user decides to stop playing. So here, we'll create a while loop. We'll have here while true. And we'll tab over all this code to make it part of the while loops block of code. So this code here is going to repeat again and again until we stop this loop by using break. Now what we're gonna do is ask the user if they wanna play again. And we'll call the input function to do that. So here we'll call input and we'll say new line, play again question mark, yes or no with Y or N as the options. And then colon to prompt them to enter one of those characters. Now the input function is going to return the text the user enters as a string. We're gonna take that text and we're gonna call the strip method to strip away any leading or trailing whitespace characters. We'll also call lower to make the characters in that string that are letters lowercase. Then we'll store the result into a variable called choice and we'll check to see if choice doesn't equal the string lowercase y because if it doesn't, then we should stop the game. By using lower here, we're counting for the user entering in uppercase Y. And by using strip here, we're counting for the user entering in say like some white space characters before putting in Y. So here we'll have if choice doesn't equal Y. So if it's not the string made up of the character lowercase Y, that means the player has decided to stop playing the game. And we'll put here, new line, thanks for playing, exclamation mark, and we'll use this dice symbol here for that. And we'll put that there. Then we'll use break to actually stop the loop and stop the game. So we'll save this and try it out. So no match, play again, I'll say yes. Two symbols match, not bad. Let's play it a few times here. No jackpots it looks like. That's okay. So we'll say no now to stop it. And there we have it. So this is how we can make a simple slot machine game using Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.